In this video, I'm sharing a tool I developed for myself when I review VPAX files from folks that I'm trying to help optimize their, their models or their DACs. Um, historically, I've used the VertiPack Analyzer, uh, which is an awesome tool. Definitely encourage you to use it. Um, but I wanted to pull even more information out of the VPAC. So I started with some of the M code from the VertiPack Analyzer. I think there's still some of it there. Uh, supplemented that with a bunch of other stuff that I'll show you um, as I go through this. In a separate video, I briefly describe or show people how to generate a VPAX file, encourage them to use the published model instead of desktop, that kind of thing, um, so that they can provide you with a VPAX file. Uh, I'll put the link to that uh, in the description. I'll also put a link in the description to this tool as well on my GitHub file share. Okay, um, so let's get started. So basically to use this, um, there's an instructions tab here. I'll go through these steps, but they're here for future reference. Basically what you need to do is go to wherever you save the VPAX file, right click and choose copy as path, come back, go to transform data and paste that here. Having the quotes around it is fine and expected. Um, this other parameter here, format DAX, I encourage you to leave that at one. Uh, I have a Power Query function in there that makes a REST API call to format all the DAX in the model uh, in case the model creator didn't do that. Um, if you don't want it to make that call and you want to see it as it is, change this to any other value but one. Okay, you hit OK there. Then you'll get prompted here to apply changes. You do that. It takes just a few seconds to... Uh, pull all the information there. Certainly you can go into uh, Power Query and see all the M stuff going on there to generate this. Uh, but now I'll just click through each of these tabs and quickly show the information that's available and sort of what I, what I look for. So first there's a summary page and there's uh, some good information here. Uh, the model name, compatibility level, uh, when they generated the VPAX, when the model was last reprocessed, the size, uh, the storage format. I should have this as large, but um, then there's the table count. There's also the number of tables that have more than one partition, uh, maybe do an incremental refresh, and the count of the partitions where there's from the tables that have more than one partition. It tells me how big the biggest table is from a row count standpoint, some other information about, you know, calc items, roles, measures, columns, etc. cetera. Uh, if there's more than one culture there, I would see that here. Uh, and then it also lists out by the type of table. This has a direct query and then a bunch of import. I should have had some dual here as well, but I did this quickly. Um, and also it shows uh, some source information. Now this is a little bit of a hack because it pulls it from the M code, that first function that's used. So if there's custom M there, you may see really weird stuff here, but if they use the UI, uh, then it typically has that source equal step and it grabs that first function, which often tells you what the, what the source is. But it also tells you about how many DAX tables they have, field parameter tables, et cetera, and the total size. Uh, we'll see this again, but I like to quickly see the model. Um, I didn't. I could have done this with Python, but then the users of this PBIX would have to have Python installed. Um, so this is just a um, one of those network graphs, and uh, it's the best way I found to be able to quickly sh look at at the tables and relationships, uh, all the tables that are involved in relationships, uh, and then also the tell me about the relationships. This is a many to one single direction. Um, you, you know, you'll see other ones there, and they're color coded to help it. Um, help you identify if there's some potentially problematic relationships there. Next we'll go to tables. Um, all the good stuff there, you know, you can use these different slicers here if you want to look at just the DAX tables um, or just the M tables or those that have incremental refresh, you could use these filters. Um, you know, rows, table size, again, good information here. But if you scroll to the right, you can see the incremental refresh policy stuff here, which is great. And the thing I like to do as well is I also have the encode expressions here. So you can get a sense, depending on what you're talking to them about, is there incremental refresh set up here? Um, how tricky are they getting with it? Is that a potential issue or not? Um, you can see the uh, 
the DAX expressions as well, field parameters, that kind of stuff. So that comes in handy. On the columns tab, again, a good table of information here. Mostly you're looking at size stuff here, data type. Um, but if you scroll to the right, uh, you can quickly tell you know, which things have MDX, uh, is available and MDX enabled or not. Um, if it's a DAX column, you'll see the expression here. Uh, also, if they, this, this table has ag, so I can quickly see you know, what the, uh, is this an alternate of in my ag table of you know, which uh, table or which column in my uh, fact table, for example. So that may come in handy. Uh, visualization here, um, color coded. So if I did, if I had turned this MDX off for some, I would see two bars here. Uh, but you know, where is the data um, being stored? Is it all integers and strings, etc.? Then there's this log log plot to help you quickly identify, you know, which uh, column and which table is maybe taking up the most space or has the highest cardinality, that kind of stuff. Uh, then if we go to the relationships view, again, um, this is only going to show you tables that are in relationships. So uh, isolated tables, disconnected tables won't show here. Uh, but if you do pick a table, say I go to my flights direct query table, it'll show you just the tables that have a relationship with it. And again, I can confirm this looks like a nice star schema, many to one, single direction. That looks good. Um, so that comes in handy. Uh, and I think that's about it for here. Some, some, again, typical stuff you may be interested in. But again, mostly I'm just visualizing the relationship here and then talking to them to say, hey, I noticed you have a many-to-many -many or a bi-directional. Let's talk about why you need that and is there maybe a better way to pass those filters around that doesn't use those types of relationships. All right, I usually spend a bunch of time on the measures tab here. Again, you can filter by table or a certain measure name. You could also um, filter by this column here, the format of DAX. Uh, this won't be case sensitive. I don't know why I typed it that way, but I say, you know, are, hey, do they have distinct count in their measures, for example? Um, you can see the format of DAX here. I also have a measure here that counts uh, how long the DAX expression is. Certainly, you can have very long expressions that are very performant. I just did it this way. You could sort it quickly alphabetically if you wanted. Um, but this, you know, often shows me some things uh, very quickly here. Um, and again, you can scroll down, get a view of the DAX, and get a sense for uh, potential uh, optimizations that you could discuss with them. This tab here shows me if they have any, if they're using calculation groups and, and those items. And you can see the expressions here. Sometimes those could be optimized, but it's good to be aware if they're there or not and potentially adding overhead. Um, same thing with RLS. So this shows me that there are a couple of roles here. The filters are, are pretty simple. Um, sometimes you see, you know, lookup value and text expression, you know, left and search and all sorts of stuff that are things you definitely want to talk about to improve partitions, uh, to improve performance. This next one is partitions and segments. Um, I don't really use this one too much uh, once in a while. Um, the measure on the front that says whether it's uh, large or small storage format, I wasn't able to pull that directly, so I have a measure that counts the size or number of rows per segment, and if it's over, I think, 1.5 million, then I say, okay, this must be in large storage format. So it is possible to get a false large there, but for the most part, that works pretty well. Um, for if there's information maybe that I didn't pull out and you just want to quickly find something else in the BIM file without separately opening that in Tabular Editor, which may be a, a good thing to do, um, but uh, this just gives you the whole BIM uh, file basically. So if you do know what you're looking for, alternative is something that relates to aggregations. Um, so if, if uh, this would just return those rows where uh, that's found in that block of uh, JSON coming from the, the BIM file. Okay, I don't use this too much, but it's there if, if you need it. The, one of the main reasons I built this was that so I could have a file that I could quickly share back with uh, whoever I'm doing the review for 
and give them recommendations, right? Instead of making a separate document with list of recommendations, uh, I just come here and I've got two uh, things here. One is I have this um, slicer that lets me choose all the frequent things I tell people and recommendations I give them for the model. You could easily add to this in the M code if you have things you like to use. Um, and then I also have this place here where I can put comments that aren't uh, typical or, or aren't listed in this slicer above, right? So, and, and uh, or I want to add more detail or, hey, there's these two measures that are really, we should optimize and look at first in your report to see how they're used, for example, okay? So that's the model reviewer tool. Um, I uh, put an underscore V1 here. I don't know if I'll make future versions of this. Certainly give your feedback in the comments. Please go ahead and subscribe. Um, if you've got some suggestions, I'd love to hear them. Or if this helps you out, it'd be great to hear that too. Thanks.